wouldn't you like to do a loop grid which looks a little bit like this where you got the post title curving round this image of the post and this is all loop grid with Elementor Pro I'll show you how okay we got loads of steps to do here so follow this through we're going to drop in a loop grid first we're going to create a brand new template go and click create template hit save away we go what we're going to do is we're just going to drop in a featured image First thing we're going to do is control the size of everything. OK, I'm going to go to my container and I'm going to say that this is going to be a 300 in width and it's also going to be a 300 in height like that. And I'm going to zero out the margin and the padding. Now go to your feature image, just set it to be zero zero as well. Go over to your style, set the width and the height of this to also be 300 by 300. And I'm going to go and set the object width to be covered. Don't worry about how it looks. This is a fake image on a fake website. The other thing we're going to do is just add in a bit of a curvature to it. So zero out the border radius. And I'm going to say, give me a thousand on the right, on the bottom and on the left. So we get that nice little curve there. The curve pattern we get here is actually very, very important. The next thing we're going to do is now drop in a text path. This is why this is a really cool widget. Not a lot of people use it. Don't overuse it. Think about your design, what works for your client and what are you trying to portray? The important bit is the path type. So over here, how you I mean, there's various different methods you have over here or um, different types of type paths. The trouble is, though, none of these might fit exactly what you're trying to get. And if you're unsure what the spiral mean, go and show the path and you can now see what it's doing. So the more words you add, the more they're going to travel along kind of like, you know, I mean, eventually it cuts off, but you get the idea. But what if the outline does not match exactly what you want? Now, I am going to be using the circle because mine is circular, other than the fact that we have like a right angle hitting in there. But what if you had a particular image mask? I just want to show you that if I go back to my image, go to advanced, go down to where we have mask, I could go and hit on a mask and I might go and pick something like a triangle or a, a flower pattern. What you need to do is work out where do you want your text to start? If you want your text to start here, you need to get this outline, the start point from here going down like that. You, you don't want to go all the way around because it gets a bit confusing, but you want to have a start and finish. Now, let's just say, let me just take off the image mask. What if I did not have a circular pattern? Here's what I would do. I would go to Canva and I would get a semicircle pattern like this, and I'd have a transparent background when you download this as an SVG or a PNG. So I'm defining my start point is going to be there. Well, it could be anywhere along that curve. And it goes all the way to here because I don't want it to go past the bottom bit. What you then do is you save that as an SVG. You go to a website like a uh, Vectorizer AI. You drop your image into here and then it will convert it into an SVG. And then what you could do over here is now if we go back over to our test text path where we have circle, I could go to custom and I can actually show you an example over there. Look, and here's what it will look like. That's what it looks like when it comes straight from Canva. But when you vectorize it, it looks like this. So if I was to dump this in, can you now see the text has gone like that? Let's just get rid of that. And let's just go back to using circle for the particular style that we have. Let's modify the text to be the post title. Get rid of the text, hit the dynamic tag that we have over here, and then go and pick post title. And you can now see it. Now it's like the wrong end of the starting because it starts over there and then it goes over. So you can see how you need to have a good start and finish to control where it is. But if that's not a problem, go over to style, go over to uh, where are we text path and we have starting point. And I'm now going to say they all start over there. Now we need that to overlap that uh, featured image that we have at the moment. Really simple and easy. Let's go over to our advanced tab. Let's just zero everything out. And then we're going to drop in some values to basically push this up to the top. Now we know that this container is 300 by 300. I'm just going to go to my text path. Everything is zeroed out. Uh, make sure the style. I mean, you, I mean, to be honest, though, you should set this to be 300 as well. Even though it looks like it fits, it does have 500 in there. So if you are going to be prescriptive over your sizing, put a 300 in as well. 
We don't need to do any rotate. I mean, we've already done our starting point. We could have used this as well. You know, it, you know our, our starting point is basically the same kind of thing, but you define how you want it. Sorry, that was probably very long-winded, but the text path, getting this right, is important. I'm now going to pop in a minus 300 like that, because that should get me roughly to the top. But can you see it's not? And I'm going to pause for about two seconds. And now I'm going to tell you what the reason was. And that probably wasn't two seconds, but it's about right. It's because if you go to your container, you have a gap at the moment. Now, it's diff it doesn't say gap there. I am using the beta version, but you would have seen element gap. But there is a gap inside of it of 20 pixels. So I'm going to set that to be zero. Can you now see the outline of that is perfectly on the circle? It's on the money. It's on the circle. But I don't want it to be touching the circle because then you get creep with the letter. Look at the letter P. It creeps into the image. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the advanced tab, not the text path, sorry, the featured image. And I'm now going to say, give me a minus 18 like that. And you can basically see it's now crept out. And this is where you now have to have a bit of a think about the positioning of the circle um, in terms of how big you want it. Now, I'm not bothered by that, the fact that it's minus 18, because I'm only going to have so many items like a grid of three by three, for instance, and there'll be a gap in the middle and I can get away with the minus 18 there. And that, my friends, is basically it. Before we move away, though, let's just modify this for the mobile as well. We might as well while we're here, OK? You can now see that the size of this now looks a little bit peculiar. So we're going to do a few modifications. We're going to go to our featured image. We're going to go to our style. And for the mobile, I'm going to set this to be 280. I'm going to set my container to be 280 as well. Go to my text path, set this to be a minus 280. Zero out the others, obviously. And what you should now get is that look there. So all I did was on the container, set it to be 280, 300 on the desktop, 280 on the mobile. The featured image is now 280, 280. Um, leave the minus 18 in because you get that bit of a gap there. And then you got the text path. And you can see here that even if the words were to go round, it's not going to creep out of the estate. You see, it works really, really well. Anyway, let's go back here. Um, let's just go to our text path. Go to content and remove. We don't want to see the path. If you see the path, you're going to see that all the time. I don't want to see the path. And there was one thing I did forget to do. On your container, click the container, right? Not the image, not the text path. You want to go down to where it says additional options. You want to set this to be a link. And then down here, you want to click the dynamic tag and you want to say post URL. Go and update that. That will take you now. It doesn't matter where you click here. That's going to take you to the post. OK, so fancy, funky way of showing a loop grid with a little bit of imagination with the text path as well. I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life, I never miss that stack.